Yeah, it's just fucking gorgeous, isn't it? These are anamorphic lenses. This is now the 55 millimeter Havo anamorphic. But watch, this is where the magic happens when you turn on these lights. Bam, and you go bam. Two times anamorphic lens. I mean, look at all the extra room on the sides, all this information. The lights that we're using in the background, they're getting these lens flares. We're using my Nanlite FS300B, and then over here we've got the Nanlite FS60B. Pavos come in two different types. Ezeo Film also sells lens with a blue tint to them. We're working with the natural flare, which I think is very cool looking. I think the blue is a little too um, too extreme. You'll start looking like J.J. Abrams. Just a gorgeous, very kind of natural kind of look. Look at that beautiful lens flare. Now we're rocking the 100 millimeter Pavo. This is a gorgeous lens, as you can tell. It's just, it wraps the subject so well. You get that compression, but you still get all that information on the side. But let's go ahead and throw on these background lights to see how it handles the lens flaring. Bam. What do you think? We're still getting some nice flaring from the lights behind us. All right, now we're rocking the uh, 28 millimeter anamorphic. Cool thing about this, even though it's super, super wide and we have all this information on the sides, I don't get lost in the mix. The subject still keeps that 28 millimeter perspective. This is with it on, it's with it off. This reflect right here, all that's doing is bouncing some of this top light onto my face so you can see my face a little bit better. Let's turn these background lights on again so we can get that lens flaring again. Now the spherical lenses I'm gonna compare these to are the Vested Primes. I currently own the 25 millimeter, the 50 millimeter, the 35 millimeter, and also a 90 millimeter. So we'll kind of work with those lenses as best we can. They won't be exactly the same focal lengths as these anamorphics, but they'll at least be close. A lot of DPs and directors, you know, prefer the look of the anamorphic. It just gives that vintage kind of character and romantic kind of feel. But then there's a lot of people that just like to use, you know, spherical lenses. Roger Deakins, for instance, he usually only uses spherical lenses whenever he shoots. So I like them both, but it kind of also depends on the product that I'm shooting. But it's very nice as a cinematographer or DP that you have both, you know, you have both in your toolbox. If a client wants anamorphics, you'll have anamorphics. If a client wants spherical lenses, well, you'll have that option as well. To each their own, but right now I'm digging these things. They look gorgeous to me. What do you think? Like and subscribe, comment down below. I don't give a shit. All right, these lenses are gorgeous as you can tell. Let's go ahead and throw on my best bit spherical lenses and see how they compare. Now we're working with spherical lenses. Right now we've got the Vespid Prime 90mm macro lens. A very different look, you know? It's not a bad look, it's just different look. You got less information on the sides here. Did we get that flaring anymore? Not so much. We're not really getting that linear kind of lens flare that the anamorphics is so famous for. All right, now we're working with the Vespid Prime 50 millimeter lens. As you can see here, we have less room to play with on the sides here. We got a little bit of flaring here going on on the side light. Let's go ahead and throw on the other one on the other side and see how that deals with it. All right, it's not bad. I mean, but I might bring it down here. Yeah, six percent, that's enough. I haven't been doing this with all of them, but I probably should have. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, rack my focus in and out just to show you how much breathing it is compared to the other ones. These lenses do not breathe hardly at all. They have virtually zero lens breathing. It's pretty impressive. And now the last lens to compare is the Vespid Prime 25 millimeter. All right, and just for consistency sake, let's go ahead and turn these background lights here off. You can get a sense of what they look like with them off. All right, and then let's turn them back on. These spherical lenses still have an interesting flare, you know, that starburst kind of like look. Some people don't like it, but I like it. You know, I think I think the more interesting the flares are, the, the better, so. Maybe you were thinking about switching over to anamorphic lenses at some point, and hopefully this comparison was a good reference for you to make that decision. Also, I just want to say, if you're a filmmaker or a cinematographer and you were thinking about investing into some anamorphic lenses, most anamorphic lenses on the market today, like legit two times anamorphic, they're not usually this size. They're gonna be way bigger. This is the real deal. This is a full anamorphic lens. I don't think there's anything else comparable out there. These are gorgeous looking on the outside as well on the inside. Render such a pleasing image. These are probably the best ones you can find if you're considering purchasing your own. Just a quick plug for DZO Film. They're just killing it right now. The quality and the attention to detail that they put into their lenses is second to none. I've been really impressed with just about every lens they put out there. Definitely the Pavo two times anamorphic lenses come highly recommended by yours truly. Tell me down below what you think is better, uh, which ones do you like, which ones do you prefer, which ones you don't like, what you think of lens flaring behind me. So signing off, that's about it. I'm tired, I'm gonna go home and eat dinner alone in my house. Cheers.